All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Yeah, so I was I was at the point, was like, I was debating, like, do I get one done? And then I have to wait, uh, you know, a couple weeks before they take the stitches out. Yeah. And then you have to make sure that you're good to go. Because even, you gotta, Don, you got to realize, it was just over 24 hours ago I had this done. You really? Wow. I had I just I had it done yesterday afternoon. Uh, I think I was uh out of the office by around three, three thirty, mm-hmm. something like that. And uh, I mean, I was I was more immobilized yesterday than before because I, you know when they when they put the shots in, they just numbed it all up so yeah. much. Yeah. That uh, I mean, it's like I I could I might go oh I don't I don't feel my fingers I don't feel my hand, so but when, uh, you, when you masturbate, no. it's like you having sex with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were still fighting fighting over me, y'all. <laughs> the twins, the twins, yeah. Well, so, but uh, the, the the funny thing is that he, he was he was cutting and he was cutting because he he you know he prepped me beforehand and telling me what to expect in the operation and that he does it's almost. It's almost like you're on an assembly line because they line you up with a bunch of other people. Wow. Wow. And I was actually scheduled for later, but uh, I, I guess one or two people had dropped off and they simply called me up because I, I told them, I said, if you can get me in sooner than later, that, that I would I would like to get in. Right. And so they would call me back and like, can you come in on such such a date? Knowing that we can't give you a time, but you get in there at, at this time and no. We'll, we'll, th- we'll throw you in the line up there somehow, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, then I, then I was going to try to be a little bit comical with her, but actually not comical. I was, I was actually watching out for my own my own ass here right now. I go, well, if you're going to throw me in, throw me in when he's fresh at the beginning, yeah. not at the tail, not at the tail end when he's starting to waver a little bit, yeah, get a little tired, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I don't want his skill set to be diminishing <laughs> by the time he sees me. She didn't take that very fine. <laughs> yeah, no, again, that's... Sense of humor. Sometimes these some of these docs they, they need a little bit more uh, yeah. you know laughter in in, in, in medicine. <laughs> oh on, on a on a uh, different note though, because here he is. I guess yeah, you know, I, I I don't know if that this this is a normal his normal thing that he does, but he you know, he was conversing with me while we're doing, I think it's just something just to distract you so that you don't feel him tugging and cutting and things of that nature, even though they just do like a local numb numbing. That's all I do, just numb you up, and and you know you're, you're there, and you're you're, ch- you're chatting away with the guy. He even said he goes, you could watch if you want. I go, nah, I go, I don't want really want to watch. I'm gonna go, because I, I I'm just not, I'm I'm not. If it's being done on someone else, sure, me, nah, not so big of that on that. But I could tell. I mean, I could I could feel him tugging and stuff like that. I didn't feel I didn't 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 feel no pain, but I feel him tugging it. I'm that feeling tugging, but I, I <laughs> well, no, 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 no. All the, that's a five o'clock. He's alarm watching that, that Don. You better Come believe on, that. That's you know. <laughs> right. Wait, yeah. the, the the fanny packs is, is booby trapped. I mean, landmines, oh. claymore, sirens, a whole nine yards. You think of the most high tech security? It's on. It's on the fanny pack. Okay. <laughs> my cars, my homes, nothing else have any of that that kind of stuff. But the yeah. fanny pack does. But it was it was kind of funny, and, and so. Uh, I, I just simply asked him, I go, well, Doc, I said, how, how are things going? He says, he's like, I have never seen such a thick and tough ligament. He's like, and he's, he's like, he, I, again, I could, I could, I could hear him cutting and cutting and cutting. Oh. And I'm thinking, it's almost like he's got a little saw saw in there and, he, and yeah. he's just cutting away and I'm like, well, don't. Pass you your coin purse. Yeah, that's so, <laughs> that's <a> money grip. <laughs> <laughs> That's... On on that note, let me let me let me, sh- let me share this with you, yeah. because <laughs> once I was done, I mean, like I said, both hands were just numbed up, and they just they were really adamant about keeping it above the heart, and I'm like literally, I walk around just like like this, keep it above the heart. So I basically assumed the prone position on the couch or in bed is all I did, and they had right. ice, ice packs, and then they gave me pain meds, mm-hmm. stuff like that to to, to take. As you know, as I need them, or I should say, as they are prescribed. Earmuffs. And, what's that? Are they earmuffs? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, so it, uh, so um, what was it? Oh, oh, the, the 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 movie I watched was a movie called Time Changer. Yeah, and it, it it was basically it just it, it's like uh you know one of the the movie concepts is like time travel is is what it was all based on time travel because you've seen there's all been all kinds of comedy like uh films like uh i don't know what that one was called the uh, hot tub uh you know there there was one that was like a hot tub hot time tub time machine, machine mm-hmm. but there's all all comic spoof but th- the thing that i actually think that you guys would actually enjoy about this was the fact that it the movie all starts off in i think it was like the 1850s the 18 actually no a little bit before that because it, you know it, it, it because when they when the gentleman did his time travel he made it into uh, the United States there in the time era of right around uh, Andrew Jackson. Cur- <laughs> our current, our current issues. Oh, yeah. And so they're seeing some of the things that are taking place inside the United States. Uh-huh. And uh, it, it, it just, it, it, it's, a, it's a good movie with, a message to it. Yeah. Some people are not going to like the message because it involves religion or lack of religion. Right. And uh, just how the decline in morale of the United States and our so-called leadership. So that's where I, I enjoyed the movie in the sense of the messages that went with it. I mean, it's not going to be one of those kind of movies that's going to simply rip you, but you know, watching that and having a bowl full of popcorn, you know, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I might, I might have to be going a little bit slower, p- picking out the, picking out the things. But it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> the bowl gets done whether it's one piece at a time or a whole yeah. handful, or and or you just tip tip the up. trough up just a little bit every now and then. Yeah. There's also the funnel technique. You just take a piece of paper, just you know, make a make a quick little funnel. A lot of people think they have to go buy a funnel. I'm thinking, you know, all you do is take a piece of paper like so, spin it like so, and what do you got? You got a funnel here right now. Yeah, you invented that when you were two, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, when when the when they hand hand out all the the Pez candy and stuff like that, I just knew how to get more. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, I did send Tony um, a text early because I want to tell a story. Uh-oh. Under five. Okay, Uh-oh. this is because I always told people that, and I think I've told you the same thing. I, I've never really have been in, in, in a real fight before, mm-hmm. but I was involved in a playground altercation in seventh grade. Oh, so again, we're, we're talking that, about that big playground way. playground fight. And we're talking about gang wars. Not the girls versus the boys. No, no, no. <laughs> none, none of this, none of these wokes, none of these it had nothing to do race or like that. This was basically eighth grade, like an eighth grade gang, and 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 there's like a seventh grade gang, but neither neither my older brother Dave nor I were in any of these gangs. We just didn't, didn't belong with them. I would be over there. It's gonna be like the seventh grade. So this was still that that time period that you you actually would shoot marbles and stuff like that. Right. You know, most people are not going to they'll, they'll think you, you took a gun to shot marble. No, they don't understand what I'm saying when I say the expression shooting marbles and and uh, you know, yeah, physical actual games of skill, not just simply pulling <laughs> out your cell phone and then thumbs thumbs going motion because there was no thought of cell phones. Hell, we didn't. Yeah, I was gonna say you still had the. Yeah, that, was still the, yeah. that was still the era of, of, of the black and white television set yeah. with with the uh, three stations. Yeah, yeah. The fuzzy so, stations. but anyway, the the playground fight scene is the fact that I'm in seventh grade, my older brother's in eighth grade. He comes over and basically gets me. I'm just giving you like the Reader's Digest version of it all. He grabs me just to, to take me. So he because they knew, knew that they're 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 these gangs that are just basically picking picking up individuals. And he wanted to bring me I, to some type of safe area that I, I wouldn't be picked on. And all I know is like all the eighth graders circled this. This eight, this eighth grader gang circled this. This is winter time. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, in Michigan. So you. You, everyone's got their boots on, their coats on, hats, mittens, things of that nature. Who grabbed you? His brother. My my older brother Dave. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My older brother Dave. He grabbed me, takes me, uh, uh takes me, start bring me out or to a different area of the playground. And all those we made about halfway through across the yard, and all of a sudden we're encircled by the the evil eighth grade gang, <laughs> being being led by the biggest bully of the pack at the time. And they're and they're just moving in closer and closer. And basically, I just I, I just knelt down while I'm looking at the big guy and I grabbed up a handful of snow and literally I just throw it up into the it hits like in, in the chest and just goes up in his face to where it basically just blinds him for that mere second or two. I think maybe yeah. I watched it some movie or something like that to throw throw sand in their face, you know. Right. And basically then I pounced on him. And then, and but, but all, the surprise one, I ended up knocking him to the ground. And I'll simply, as I try to tell people that, my cheese slipped off its crack at that point in time. I don't remember anything else other than I went berserko. Total Christmas and, story, huh? Yeah. And I just started just <laughs> flinging and, and wailing against everyone. All, all I know is that when, when it's all done, we're, we're all we're all being sent to the principal's office. Mm-hmm. And they have like the little nurse's station, little infirmary and stuff like that. And there's a bunch of these eighth graders that are are either being seen by the nurse or waiting to be seen by the nurse. And then there's my older brother and myself over at waiting to go into the principal's office. <laughs> of course. <yeah>. And <laughs> I actually think that, that the principal is almost laughing because he comes out to see. You gotta be like I had a I had a butch haircut, so I look like you know I had nice round face, butch haircut, and then I mean, yeah, I, I look like a squirrel at that point in time for being just probably a target to be picked on. Yeah. And uh, here I am, boohoo crying in the whole nine yards, and he and I don't have a scratch on me. <laughs> My older brother Dave doesn't have a scratch on him, and, and it's like kind of like the principal thinking this this little chubby boy. <laughs> Just destroyed like these these six or eight other boys over here, and they're all, and they're all the see the infirmary, and I, I I have to give this 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 uh, guy some tissue to wipe his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so know my yeah, I go, yeah, yeah. So I, I always tell people it's like it wasn't a very glorious type of thing that I did right there because I was like the biggest boo hoo, and and, and and literally I I still remember that, that moment that I literally just I lost it. Yeah. Because when I saw him, my brother was being he, he was being jumped by two or three people, and then I just I literally I went over. There, I'm like grabbing one by the coat, and I'm just flinging them this way, and I'm flinging them together, and just I'm kicking them, booting them, I'm back swinging. I mean, literally, just I didn't know nothing about fighting. I'm just like get off my brother, you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to get him up off off his feet, knowing that if he's on his feet, he stands a chance, not on the ground, because that's when all the movies. If you're on the ground, people are going to be putting the boots to you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That same movie portrayal still happens to this day. Get down on that ground and people are going to put the boots to you. That's why I tell everybody about this jujitsu bullshit. No, you don't want to lay there for with them for half an hour until they get yeah. tired. You want to destroy them get out of there. Yeah, no, that, when it comes to, yeah, there are very, very few circumstances are you ever going to see the old macho one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Right. It's typically someone else either has a weapon right. or they got somebody else waiting in the lurks. Yeah. So it, it's not admirable. At you know, There was a point in time when, yeah, it was admirable. Okay, well, you're having a tiff. Let's step outside. You thump each other a few times. The beef is over. Buy each other a drink if you want to. Yeah. And, and, and bygones be, 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 be bygones. But that's not the era that we live in oh. now. No, it doesn't exist. No. Yeah, because too many people shot uh, shot it on uh, you know on uh, their social media, and now I can't be looking like a pansy. I gotta gotta go get my gun, gotta go get my knife, and I gotta you know gotta stab you or something. You know, gotta you know take your ear off just to show you that. Now I'll wear it on my necklace or something like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, with with my necklace and with the um with the Mercedes Benz emblem on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, that was. A story that I had uh, a gentleman. He he uh, emailed me and was wanting to know. Uh, he had I had said something somewhere else and he asked me for it. And I said I, it's too long of a story for me to want to type out. But I go, I'll get on the podcast here. I'll bring it on up there and 
and I'll, I'll shed my tears. So you've on, been given to us all these years about never being in you know, <laughs> Don. I just didn't want you to see me like to start to you know have to pull up my little tissue again and and yeah. relive this 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 memory there that that scarred me. You know, want, I think want to tell you about what happened. Crying. Brian in the principal's office. Yeah, you don't want to talk about yeah. haircut. Yeah, that. yeah. The, it, <laughs> I think that I think that incident right there has led me to be an emotional eater. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. The, and thus, you were why I went to play with it before that happened. It, <laughs> just because you know, I yeah. when I go in, <laughs> when I when I go into a buffet now, I feel like I have to destroy it. You know, yes, you have to. Yeah, the, the snowball incident comes back to you. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like getting all those uh, uh, the uh, coconut flakes and putting on some of my yeah yeah yeah. yeah. This reminds me of the snow, the snowball. Yeah, there you go. Put it put it on your ice cream. Yes. Here I see it. Here all these psychiatric trips I've had made. I just had to have, you know, get on get on the couch and just talk to you, huh? Yes, that's it. Fifteen minutes and it saved you a million dollars. Oh wow! And all and all the time, and as you well know, time is money. Yeah. Boy, it's dropping the knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's another one of those quotes that I I enjoy using a great deal. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got so a, anyway. I got a, so I got a I fan spilled. question here. I got a fan question here for Don. This is from. Uh, You're not my fan. I'm not your fan. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, good thing it's not for me. Yeah, that's why. I, this is from Tall Paul Hutchins, Jr says mr don what cigar would you recommend for a feller trying to for feller just trying to start smoking no better man to ask than the champ himself that's right that's right and monte cristo never fails who uh, romeo and julieta never fails you know um dunhill never fails what's in your mouth right now Queer question is that? What? Well, <laughs> if you don't take, know her name, if, if you take it, <laughs> it, it's all in the person asking the question. The, the way you take the question, Don, and you took it. You took it in a very weird way. So, you know, but, I I, I want to be left out of this conversation you know, right now altogether. Uh, right you now, know yeah. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> well, here's and here's another question then, for uh, for Dan. This is from. The Sting, okay. 6820. You know, I, I don't know those those high flute names of those cigars that Mr. Fry talks about. You know, the ones I, I think I knew about, uh, I think these are cigars that uh, you could buy for like, what, 24 a buck or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's bubble gum. Yeah, exactly. They're the bubble gum cigars. All right. When did you, when did you buy? You just... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, rest assured, I would not be picking up any cigarettes nor cigars off of, uh, yeah. You knocked somebody. The sidewalk. You knocked your brother down, you, and then all the cigars went, so you picked them up, and everyone would go in your pocket, you know, and you picked it up for the oh, first There you go. For next recess, I can go out there and sell it to the other students That's at true. that point. That's then true. There you go. Yeah. Got the mar I got the marble action taking place now. I got the cigar, cigarette action. Maybe get some a couple of tins of chew. Get get the, the market cornered for everything. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And get it. Okay. A sheep around the corner. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. All right, there, T Tony. Go ahead on, on that question before right. we were so rudely interrupted. <laughs> Don says no questions for Dan. We already we heard <laughs> enough stories already. <laughs> You already lied to us for 20 years. Oh, yeah, okay, so there you go. Trying to process this, a little hurt. 30, 30 years has been a crime. This is um, okay. From the Sting six six two zero, or six eight two zero. Sorry, it says Dan Severin. If you did not train heavy in the gym, how did you develop your impressive brutal strength? Did you develop your strength through just daily wrestling and drills? Oh no, I I, I uh. Again, when I when I was in high school, when I was in college, though I I did have a regimented weightlifting program. I did at those time periods. 
So yeah, I, I'm not certain what I might have said, what story I might have said somewhere um, on the way then to, to, to um, mislead someone there. But you know, well, I didn't, that you never trained for the UFC. Yeah, well, it was from a future one of our like. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no. Again, it, 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 show where you, it, you said that you never really lifted heavy weights. Yeah, well, well, in 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 the well, yeah, I know. Uh, I'll, I'll address what Don said there first. No, in in my entire you know cage fighting career, because I, again, I don't want just to be just. Pigeonhole it just just to the UFC. UFC was probably the, the, or obviously was the best known company of them all. But you know, I was just uh, a journeyman. That uh, there were so many different uh, MMA companies and NHB companies that were popping up. You know, uh, most that have perished to, throughout the the time. But uh, you know, they would just offer up someone and, and throw out a dollar amount, and I'm like, sure, you know. And, and without training me, I. I led practices at my training facility, and when there was an odd number, that's when I would actually be able to get in and actually do some training. But I was actually like the coach, and then I would you know want to be a workout partner when I possibly could. What, what you know, you? and uh, but again, I, I had a lot of I had a lot of rules because I think that's where a lot of current guys. Hmm take damage unnecessarily in their practice because they're practicing. They, they might practice with boxing glove and say, well, yeah, that's, that's a much thicker, heavier pad of glove than training with the MMA glove. And oh, that, that is true, but still taking that impact. I was always big about not allowing my guys to hit each other in the head and and, and almost do, do it in, in uh, the same aspects of like a professional wrestling match to where you'll, you'll, you can verbalize it. You go there and, and you go like you throw the hand up there, but, but you verbalize and say something like that. You know, head right, and 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 you, and you drop it, and you might even touch it, but don't actually hit the guy because the reality is, you need workout partners, and there was no money at this time, and everybody else has to go back to work right. the next day. Can't right. go back to work the next day if they got a big old egg or if their nose has been broke or. They got a couple of ankle, teeth knocked ankle, out, or yeah. someone hyperextended their uh, elbow, or uh, tweaked their knee, their ankle. I mean, it's uh, so I was really adamant about uh, tra training, but training safely. But there was it was heavily uh, cardiovascular based because you had no time. You would just basically it was always set up on that uh, on that boxing timer clock to where you had thirty seconds in between going from one workout partner to the next workout partner and. I, I've said it before, my rules were, you know, drink your fountains here, bathroom is there, do not puke on my mat, because if you puke on my mat, you're going to clean up, not me, because if I'm feeling nauseous, I'm smart enough to simply back off a round or two and, and to catch my breath and stuff like that. And I did have guys that Ralph either on the mat, on, on the way to, 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 to the toilet, on the toilet, or stepped outside, is like, going, guess what? You're still going to clean up the mess, because I told you already what the rules are, and and you you'd be surprised how it, it changes their whole morale when the, when they're cleaning up their own puke. Right, right. And they have to clean it up to my standards, not their standards. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> maybe there's some additional punishment. Maybe at, on top of just that one spot there, finish doing up the rest of the mat there now too, so that I don't have to do it later there. Yeah, there you go. And that's called that's Tom. That's called being the Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer painting the fence. Yeah. Smells. See, great. I wonder. I wonder how many young people will even understand that analogy of the story of Tom Sawyer no, no, painting no. the picket fence. No, I mean, that that's been outlawed. You know, because yeah. it's not politically correct. Anymore. It's not anymore. It's insane. Oh, is that because Tom Sawyer? Best friend was black. Is that is that what why that was that the, they, they 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 were not allowed to co mingle? You right, know? right. Yeah. Yeah. They, were, they had to keep everybody separated. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now there's again you, you but now you they, can look at now they want discrimination and you know they they're demanding it. They, you know, the other side's demanding the discrimination now. You know it's crazy. That's. It's not that crazy. It, it just there's there's an agenda control. and a stupidity. Yeah, yeah. I keep I keep coming up with two things. All you need to do, and I, we've talked about it before. I'll, I'll bring it up again and again and again because if you put in fact checking and term limits, or 
we're safe. If you if you should just change those two things, right. term limits on all offices, though, Don, all offices. Right, right. I mean, I'm talking about judici judicial, right. everything. So Supreme right. Court, you know, they're, they're not, they get too old. a lifetime. Yeah, they're too old for that. That's not yeah, to me, you no, know, again, I, and what I like about it, the whole concept is by only allowing two terms max is that you only got your, your salary. Again, the salary that was paid to you by tax dollars. So income taxes and stuff like that will matter more to you because you're only going to get two years that you're you're riding on, on the people's money. And then you got to go out. But there's no retirement plan right. off these two terms. Right. You still have to work on your own. I mean, as a government, do you think we're going to give you more tax dollars for you, for yourself? No. Those two things, I guarantee, will just fact checking a little bit. Look how many things that Joe Biden, you know, he probably did his best presentation ever at that. Uh, what was the speech? The uh, state, what did they call the speech? State of the union. Yeah, state of yeah, state of the union address. Mm. Yeah, I can't even imagine what they had him amped up on. Yeah. Because, you know, is that the normal job? No, that isn't. And well, he used to you know, give uh, Adolf Hitler cocaine in his eye drops, you know? Yeah. So, that to way. Me, I look at it this way everyone gets lucky one day. Even the biggest idiot gets right. lucky one day. But it, what is your consistency? Yeah. But they would, yeah, I would reiterate, they would, his cocaine would go through his eye drops now because they absorbed in the eyes that. That quickly, you know, and then he's also not sniffing or bleeding through the nose or or chewing himself, you know. So, and if he did, yeah. who would say anything? But I mean, yeah. Well, again, I I I never heard of that type of way of delivering cocaine, but it's like it's kind of scary sounding. But uh, again, he was a he was a scary cat that had a few marbles loose as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Blame, blamed everybody else. Blamed everybody else. Just of course, to me, it's like going, you're the leader of the country. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if stuff be going south, it's because of your leadership or your lack of leadership. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So again, Dan Severs will fix it. Back checking, term limits to where you, you get your, you get a total of eight years and then you're done to where you rejoin the workforce. For. So all the shitty rules you came up with come right back to bite you right in the ass. Right. Right. Absolutely. The more and more people actually hear about that, I, I hope they hope that that I hope this one goes just uh what, what's the word I'm looking for goes viral. Yeah. <laughs> so that more people understand just those two little things will make oh the biggest difference in the world. Because you got people that they've they've lived in politics for too many decades. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got a president that's been in there how many different decades 50, alone? 50 fucking years, man. Yeah. And then, then you look at Nancy Pelosi, you look at Schumer, you look at, just go down the list. How many of these people have been there term after term after term after term? To like, no, two at max, mm -hmm. get out. Yep. Go back to work, work on your own retirement fund. It's not, you're not being retired from taxpayer dollars. Right. Right. And, and that's why, again, I would say Trump. Love him or hate him, the man took. I love him. <laughs> one, I think it took. Yeah, again, no, but, but again, no. the, but again, the facts. Yeah. He what took one dollar for salary because by law he had to take one dollar. Yeah. And he had to, so he had to run his companies mm -hmm. to make certain that he didn't, you know, starve or you know go bankrupt. Yeah. And he was running the country. On top of that, the man did a fantastic job for yeah. our country. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think his kids ran the country, ran the companies. You know, while he was doing the government, the kids were doing the companies. So sure, sure. Oh, I, I say that Hunter is Hunter Biden is trying to follow in the 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 the, the same footsteps of of uh, the predecessor uh, president. He's trying to help his daddy run some companies as yeah, well. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh-huh. You know. Oh, don't forget all the paintings he's doing. Is, is he Those is he, is he paintings? Is he trying to help run <laughs> some, yeah. some companies? Yeah. Sorry, my my days yeah. my, my days yeah. my days of passages were you know running there at that point. Well, they, found some, they found some in the White House there too. Remember that? Oh. Yeah. A few yeah. months back. 
And well, I thought that I thought that might have been like a nasal inhaler, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they found a little baggie of cocaine in the in the in the West Wing there. See, I'm I'm gonna just just to just to be wacky and silly here. I just hope I still have it. I'm pretty sure I do, but we're going into we're gonna go into the dun, dun, dun. Oh okay. God. the actual oh, it's like the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I had to, I had that to unbolt it, yeah. unlock it, three just... different locking mechanisms. The you eye, know, eye scanner. Oh no, yeah. we can't use his fingerprints right now. Oh no. But you know, th this is Okay, this is called a uh, nasal inhaler. Oh, uh, sure. Okay, sure. The, the good old fat. We talk about cocaine. Inhaler. Eye drops, right now. Like cocaine, all of a sudden, you, you got to take a whiff of it. So let me get my eye drops out. <laughs> Spearmint. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, wow. Now he'll be really talking fast. <laughs> I I have the munchies all of a sudden. What's that up about? <laughs> but see, but th th even just that little shot of Vic right there is like, yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah. yeah Vic does look good. Yeah, yeah, Vic clears the sinuses really good. She makes you want to just dance. Yeah. <laughs> A, I don't know. So, He's a drink what, what new area do we want to go into? We we talked about cinema. I've uh, well, let's um actually. I basically uh, um, you know, exposed one of my my great sins to the world that I actually was involved in, into a fight there, you know. Yeah. So I, I basically I confessed to Father Father Don. Yeah. Yeah. After thirty years of hearing, you've never been in a fight. Yep. It finally comes out. Yep. I hope hopefully you you'll be able to sleep okay. I'll I'll be able to sleep just fine, but I, I just don't want to know. I just I'm so disappointed. You, you think you know somebody, you know, and then yeah. no wonder those hands are all messed up for all the fights he's really been. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> how many times you broke those hands, boy? I I really don't think I I may, maybe once or twice I might have broke something. Something in him, you know, a finger he or something dropped, like that. He dropped a penny but, down the drain and he started to stick his hand down there to get yeah, it. Yeah. And but, but, a hammer. <laughs> I smashed it with a hammer to get it to go in there. <laughs> but, 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 Don, how many times have you, should you just take some of that white athletic tape? Just all you do is tape two fingers together. Yeah. Or, or, say, if it's that one, you just tape three fingers together, keep it isolated to it. Keep on going. I can still, I can still hook, cup, you know, keep, keep yeah. moving. Yeah. Mark Coleman, let's talk about what happened with him the other day. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's, well, I'll get it. it it's sad that, that, uh, well, I mean, I'll say it's, it, it was, it was wonderful what he did. Yes. I mean, the fact that he ran, I, I, again, if, it, if I've got part of the story wrong, please correct me, but his, his own personal dog basically kind of awoken him and realized that the house next door, which is his parents' place, is on fire. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that, uh, and then uh, he ran in, and he carried out each of his parents. At least that's that was how I, I had read it. That uh, he had to run in, he had to carry out his. Uh, I'm not sure if he carried out his mom first or dad first. Right, one I mean, at a time. Right. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Okay. The quick question is, do you know which one it was, the mom or dad? No, okay. No. All right. Now again, the quick question would, would be again. Okay, if if you if you got time to mull this over and you can flip a coin or something like that, who who should it be? Their mother, hundred percent. Yes, I said I said the exact same thing that it, right. it just it's just that mother is the one that really brought you into this world, and it should be your mom that you should take out first, and then go back and get pop. You know, again, or, or the old adage of ladies first. Well, I think as a father too, I would I would be pissed off at my boy if he didn't get her first. Like, what's wrong with you? Well, it's like what, what Mark did was com very just Mark, you know, very commendable, very, very honorable. Hero. Mark Coleman was born to be a hero. Yes. You know, because he, he was on what one or two Olympic teams. He was the first heavyweight champ or second heavyweight champion of UFC. You know, he's a multiple tournament winner. Um, he, he won the Pride Grand Prix. Um, you know, he's he's done shit that nobody else has ever done. Right. And he grabbed both his parents out of a burning house. Guy was, he's like a Hercules or Odysseus. He was born to be a fucking yep. hero. 
yeah. that he is. You ran it to run into a burning house. Like that takes a real man. Oh yeah, a champion. Well, it, it does. But I, I, but I will, I will simply say this there too. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he comes from the sport of amateur wrestling, which right. is a kind of a different type of sport. Yeah. yeah, you are you're an individual. You're you're on a team, yes, but you're that individual that walks out there all by yourself. Yeah. to take on your individual war, your battle that, that you must do. So that's where I, I, I simply look at that. The sport of wrestling produces more people that of character traits. They've got strong character traits. Right. They believe in themselves more because they're not worried about, geez, do I have my other two or three friends here with me that are going to back me up or something like that? No. You've, you've been so used to walking onto that mat whether you think you're going to win, whether you think you're going to lose, because we've all been on both ends of the receiving of, right. of that right there. Right. And it, it sure it feels a whole lot better if you can win, but there's sometimes um, no you, option. you're going to winning is not an option. Yeah. You're just, you're going up there to take your ass kicking. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So we've, we've all been there at different times and I've yeah. shared different stories of, of my past. There too were same thing there that my whole, my whole status of victory is not to get pinned. Right. Yeah. Well, well, definitely Mark's a hero. Our condolences yeah, to his, right. definitely to his family right now, what they're going through. Yeah. And it's, it's, and it just sucks to hear about his dog. We need to get him a new dog. Was well, it his dog or his parents' dog though? I think that was his, the, I think that was his Rottweiler that he had just gotten hammer. Right. Remember he had just got him when we right. did that podcast with yeah, him. Yeah, he loved that dog. He, I know Mark, Mark, Mark loved that dog. Mark yeah. loved that hammer very much, you know? Yep. Well, yeah, just, I mean, how much you love your dogs. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, everybody, I, you know, I love my well, dog. If, if we do get a chance, we should, because uh, I know there is a GoFundMe page, we should just put that up there on our screen yeah. at, towards the end of the, the clip there when, when you get a chance so that uh, uh, other people can be aware of that. And, yep, so. 100%. That will get, I will do that. Yeah, like I said, our best well, well, we, can't, we can't end that on, on, on a somber note. What, what else can we go into? Um, oh, uh, we're making a donation, um, under your name, um, of a thousand dollars, Dan Severin. Man, not only is it underneath your name, but it's your portion of, um, the money that we've made, um, through these last three years. So you're, you're donating me a thousand dollars. Yeah. Wow, I'm 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 a pretty rich guy there. <laughs> there you go. Well, you you saw him pull out the safe earlier. Yeah, look at him. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it was a I, figure of speech. I, I feel I feel a little feel faint. <laughs> <laughs> I better, I gotta get out my inhaler again. Smelly sauce. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. A little lightheaded. Mark already got your pound of flesh in in the fight, right? He doesn't need he doesn't need your thousand dollars. Uh huh. Yeah. His, his his winning purse was way more than mine that night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.